Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here at GTC 2025 in San Jose with Sarbjeet Johal. Uh, you run uh, Stack Pain Research, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit about yourself and what your company does. Yeah, we, um, we do uh, market research, and it's all open research. Like, we don't sell it, but we use that to advise the, our customers, mostly the tech companies, and uh, talk to the, their partners as well as their customers to get the market know-how and then leveraging my know-how from like 30 years being in the industry and putting yeah. it into it. So open source research, I like yes. it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so as we're here at GTC, it's uh, it's Thursday, day four. Uh, we had just had Quantum Day, the keynotes were a couple days ago. Uh, any thoughts from the show? What were your thoughts from the keynote? Keynote was, uh, I think, mostly incremental, but there were a few announcements um, on the networking side. The Photonic was that new stuff. And then uh, on the storage side, they are giving stressing more on the storage. Yeah. So actually, uh, the, the two main key takeaways, were like, uh, which are kind of unique, you can say, the observations I had, was one is like uh, uh, NVIDIA is uh, taking the open source route to solidify their moat with developers. So they're open sourcing more and more of their libs. And by the way, open sourcing their libs um, only helps them because that stuff runs on their um, hardware only yeah. so far, right? People can adopt to it other uh, sort of uh, chips and all that, but right now it just runs on their own. That's not number one. And number two is they're doing a collaborative, uh, lot of collaborative solutions. So if you notice that all these uh, storage companies, old and new, right? They put them together to, you know, focus on the storage for Gen AI, which needs to be faster and and more smarter, if you will. Yeah, and this, so to me, I remember uh, when Charlie G and Carlo joined Pure Storage, I had sent him a text sort of jokingly, ha ha, you joined a storage company. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, he actually uh, called me back and he said, you know, if AI is gonna work, it needs three things. Fast processor, the GPUs, fast network, and fast storage. And so I do, I do think all three of those things have to work in conjunction. And I thought, you know, historically, GTC has been a very GPU-focused show, obviously, called GPU Technology Conference. Yes. Uh, but it was good to see more storage. And I also thought uh, there was more network. You talked about the co-packaged optics, the silicon photonics. Uh, that was a pretty interesting piece of innovation because for the first time ever, you don't need those bulky, well, they're not that bulky, but they're very fragile, the transceivers. You got to put them in, it creates latency. There's a lot of MADS cost. And so they managed to build a switch the Spectrum X, where you can actually take the photonics the, or the uh, uh, the optics out as it's 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 embedded right in. So there's a big cost savings element. The bigger part of that, though, is the power savings, right? And so clearly we got to do something about that. I also thought in his opening uh, little prologue, and he talked about this as well at uh, CES, was the next phase of AI being physical AI. Yeah, and yeah. So, he has been talking about it for a lot. Yeah, of yeah. Years. So, so the rise of robots, and I think he really emphasized that point here, where, um, in fact, at the uh, in the analyst Q and A at CES, he said anything that is uh, that moves will eventually be autonomous. And so, think of the network implications of that, right? You can, everything's got to be connected all the time uh, if if you're going to have that. Now, um, uh, I do, I do, I did find one of the comments interesting too was the comment around how there's a shortage of people to do jobs <laughs> and that robots will wind up doing them and uh, what do you what are your thoughts is there a shortage of because all we hear about is how AI is taking jobs but now on the other side we're building robots to do more jobs I, I mean to be honest with you overall I mean it, if you take one sector or one country or one state or one area yes you can show that there's a shortage of labor yeah but if you see the world as a whole no, no, there's not short of shortage of labor. If there was a short of shortage of labor worldwide, we will not have the border crisis. Like yeah. people are coming in to work here, right? So people in countries uh, like India and like Indonesia, those like highly populated countries, they have a lot more people, uh, young populations, and they have high unemployment rate. So that's that's kind of. Uh, argument you can give it only for one country or yeah. just to paint a picture that yeah these it also depends on the type of job right yeah, like if you're trying to build job. more mines you're better off sending robots and then yeah and all that stuff. Like, in that, mines yeah. and all that stuff totally I, it, it makes sense actually in, 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 
which are very labor intensive jobs, which are physical labor is like, uh, yeah. you know, it breaks your back if you pick up a certain amount of weight and all that. Yeah. So yeah, robots will help, but uh, that's, not, that's why the robots are being designed as a, like a human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Legs and arms and <laughs> our world is designed that way, right? Yeah. So that, that's good. Yeah. So another uh, observation I made was this. I want to pick your brain on that. Is that the cadence of annual, you know, releases of newer chips, newer systems, right? And I sort of tweeted. Um, it just struck me like hey, this is annual cadence. Just like iPhone, just like these smartphones from Samsung, those are thousand dollar things, right? But here, it's hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. It takes a while for you, as a company, as an entity, to consume that stuff and bring it in, rack and stack, and you know, pull pull the wires and together and and, and serve that to the, the to the developers and the model builders. So that cadence is very quick, and it, I, I think it sort of. Uh, confuses the investors and, and the buyers a little bit. Should I wait for another year for better? Uh, you know, I, I have heard that. I have heard that, not from the hyperscalers because they're going to always want what's fastest. But once we get down to enterprise adoption, and I think at this show we're starting to see more enterprise adoption, um, the, almost a paralysis, and because the models evolve so fast, the chips evolve so fast. Do I pull the trigger now or do I wait to next year? And I think that's. Yeah, and it's not great for the industry. Obviously, you want to get going now. My advice is you got to go. Yeah. You got to pick a line. But it, to me, Sergey, it's not a lot different than what the remember the old x86 days. Those chips evolved pretty fast, and so a lot of enterprises would just skip a cycle, right? Yeah, yeah we do actually. Even yeah. with our iPhones, we skip. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, average person skips it like two yeah. or three years. You know, I never skipped a cycle until this one. I still, really? I still haven't upgraded. <laughs> yeah, it was just You're I don't know. Man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't know. Apple intelligence, that's another oh, yeah. story, but um, doesn't seem to have a lot of value. But um, I, I, the, and the other question is, so when, the, when you do upgrade, what do you do with the old systems, right? Like yeah. in traditional CPU-based computing, I remember being in corporate IT, we'd take our data center servers and we'd maybe have them run on second-tier applications or we'd move them to branch offices over time, but we get a lot of life out of them. And so the question is, will the NVIDIA cycles be a lot, uh, enable you to do that, or is the competitive pressure so high that you always gotta be buying the latest and greatest? And if it's always the latest and greatest, that's gonna be hard for most I, companies to swallow. I think that model is more, uh, uh, you know, hyperscaler friendly, because I don't want to commit my capex as an enterprise. That I will let. Well, I mean, how much of the revenue comes from the hyperscalers, right? Yeah. So it better be hyperscaler friendly, yeah. So it's very hyperscale friendly. And on the, on the other side, on the flip side, hyperscalers are building their own chips as well. So that's another sort of caveat. But all, yesterday, I, I came up with a catchy line. You know, so I want to share that with yeah. your okay. viewers, right, your audience. Is that okay, uh, this This is zigzag of hardware releases. Okay, next one is more powerful. Next one is more powerful. So there's some like, you know, step function, if you will. But the software, it, software is what is a shock absorber in this ride, if you will, because the software is backward compatible, right? So that's the big plus with with, uh, with NVIDIA, and, hmm. and, and, and Jensen actually mentioned that, mentions that time and again, that, that the CUDA libraries, which work on the latest GPUs, they will work on 10 years old GPUs. They will be slow, but yeah. they will work. So that is a huge plus, I think. Uh, so where you can use the second or third tier chips in other countries which are not friendly to us or or they are like you know yeah. us has put these countries in three tiers right well, well no one's friendly now our friends yeah and our foes and everybody in between so that everybody in between will get all these you know the remains of the gpus yeah i do like that i thought you're gonna say ai super bowl but uh, <laughs> AI super bowl i tweeted <laughs> yeah and, and he said that on, i don't know maybe they saw my tweet or i don't yeah. know maybe they saw other tweets but uh, it yeah. was yeah. Uh, fun to see that all right uh, before we get into quantum day where where are we with enterprise ai adoption is it are we kicking the tires are we like just not sure what to do with it like how, how should you know the viewers just be thinking about this is there some urgency to go out there and do it or do they have a little time I think urgency is there from the point of view that you want to get your feet wet, right? You want a team formed uh, which looks at all the, these different options and different models and you want to get going. You don't want to just 
wait for another year, as you, as you said earlier, yeah. right? But on on the on the sort of user side and who's using how much, this is a spectrum, as we all know, right? So the ISVs like well, likes of Microsoft, likes of Google, they're cooking it up and serving as well, you know, both, yeah. uh, both they're doing both things, and they are using it like to the most extent. But then you go to next year, you know, so. People like you know, uh, uh, let's say tax software, turbo tax kind of guys like that's into it. Kind of second tier of ISVs, they have started to use it. Then, the, then that it comes to the enterprises. Right? Yeah. So, so that's where your the main question is. I think they should start playing with it and, and start infusing their their sort of proprietary data into into the models, doing drag or fine tuning of the models, and actually on that front. Uh, the the vendors are kind of struggling in a way to showcase the value, you know. Yeah, I, I agree. To show, AWS yeah. AWS has their, you know, uh, platform, and, and then IBM has theirs, and Google has theirs, and it, it's, it's confusing. It's got a hack of the market in many ways. Like, should I go with these guys or the, those guys? And, and they're having a hard time t- telling their story. Within that story of whole Gen AI for enterprise, the agentic framework is the hardest thing. Like the, the sessions here, if, if they have agentic, anywhere agentic in the in the title, the lines are so long. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Have you noticed that? Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't even get in those. Yes. Yeah, if you didn't pre-register, you're not getting in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually, that, that part is will be confusing. I believe the developer is the most lost persona in this whole transition. And uh, any, any vendor which will hug the developers, or they will guide the developers to the right direction. They they will uh, sort of win hmm. this battle, at least if, if not the whole war. All right. So last topic. Uh, I just attended a Quantum Day in person. You did it over stream, which actually might have been smarter for sitting around so long. Uh, any any uh, takeaways from there? One of the first takeaways I had though was out of 18 panelists, there was only one female. Yeah, so yeah. I, I do think a little more diversity there is needed. But uh, uh, what were your thoughts from the, f- the first Quantum Day? He promises we're going to do more uh, yeah, at GTC. One, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to hear yours, actually. But I'm, I, I was, well, I'll yeah. go first, then. Oh, wait, go ahead, please. Okay, I thought one of the more interesting takes was, and I hadn't thought about this, because uh, Jensen keep joking about how people think Quantum's going to run Excel faster. And I, he always picks on Excel for some reason. <laughs> but, and I, and I kind of get what he's saying. It's not about running traditional compute faster. It's about finding the things we couldn't do with traditional compute yes, yes. to let quantum and let quantum do that. Yes. And and uh, and uh, I don't know if we've really explored. That. In fact, I'm not even sure what those use cases are. Like, but part of it's hard to imagine. In fact, one of the panelists said, if you had asked somebody in the 50s when the first Honeywell computer was invented or whatever, like that, we'd be using a mobile phone to call a car. To take us to a predetermined, optimized route, you know, nobody would have thought of that, right? Because then it was really about putting a man on the moon or something like that, and and really yeah, science. Yeah, said that. yeah, and so um, you know now, and so that that was interesting. I think also I still didn't really get a sense of when quantum's coming. Uh, you know, Jensen sort of jokingly said that, you know, he took a bunch of public stocks down because he didn't know they were publicly traded, and he said it's a ways out. <laughs> that was in the beginning. I tweeted yeah. that. Yeah. A lot of people liked it, and some yeah. people said Jensen, Jensen is scared of the quantum guy. Yeah. That's why he's saying this. Yeah, I think the quantum is one of those things that I, I believe it, it's going to be one of those things like just like AI and Gen AI, like it was like slow progression, and all of a sudden it arrived. Like within a month, so, so yeah. okay, everybody's excited about it. We haven't had our quantum iPhone yes, moment, yeah. right? We, we didn't. Yeah, we haven't had that quantum iPhone moment, you call it, or quantum Gen AI moment. Yeah. So, uh, but having said that, like, uh, I think it will take a while because error correction is very, the like, error rate is very high still. In yeah. Qubits, like, as far as I understand, I read about it and I get sort of pushed about, about it from the uh, likes of IBM and, and and Microsoft folks and AWS. You talk to these folks and and read about it. So I think that that has error correction has to go to, um, go up or error rate has to go down. Um, and then also you have to package the system, like memory utilization and, and other parts of the system, and how you will feed the data and, and how you will hook up the quantum to the legacy, you know, computing, you know, um, the. The zeros and ones guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, actually, overall, 
um, it's contentious to say or controversial. It's it, in the first panel. It seemed like um, Jensen was trying to be a teacher. Like you should pitch it like this. You yeah. Know? Like, hey, you you're pitching it wrong. Actually, he has a point. But at the same time, at some point it, during that first sort of yeah, some of the founders didn't like that. The, though, right? Yeah, he, he was making them look like okay, oh, you know, you don't need to do this or like uh, why are you creating you know noise. You, Tell me about the use cases. You can't even tell me about the use cases, which most of the people think like that. And, and some of the folks who, uh, refuted that com uh, those comments and said, "Hey, we didn't know that we can call a car and a car will show up yeah. within like a minute or thirty seconds uh, with the, our traditional uh, legacy." Well, that's my point. I'm not sure what we know what the use cases are. Yeah, exactly. And if we don't know the use cases, we don't know the timing. And another thing right. is another um, sort of uh, very nuanced observation I have is that. I, I believe most of the quantum computing will be the back-end computing, like the like a super computing kind of use cases. Yeah, it, it's not gonna. You're not gonna be moving around with the quantum computer. You want to have one in your home, yeah, or your yeah, car, or a PC yeah. kind of thing, yeah. right? Because we have enough power right now so far. So all right. Yeah. So sum things up. We had lots of GPU talk, right? Yes. Obviously, more storage, more network. All three of those have to work together. We had a quantum day, kind of leaving us. Still not sure what the use cases are, when timing's going to be. The next year they will do the, the uh, demos, they say. You really believe that? I think so. Huh. Okay, well, I'm, I'm a little skeptical we'll have quantum we'll demos. demos. Well, well, I'm not, sure we'll have some. demos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else you want to add? No, actually, I think uh, to the to the developers and to the to the folks who are practitioners, I always focus on them. Yeah. Like, keep learning. Uh, keep an eye on all these vendors and and and, and share your thoughts online and on, on social. If you if you see something good or if you see something like fishy, there's a lot of noise at this, right? Yeah. There's a lot of noise, and let's let's reduce that noise and call it out when people are when vendors are sort of BSing stuff. So just that's my yeah. suggestion. And all I know is the show is packed this year, so I'm expecting it even it more next year. Big show. The streets are closed. Yeah. And the bigger. They had a better. GTC park and everything. Yeah. So yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, appreciate having you on. Thank you, Tius. Yeah. So on behalf of... How sorry, you work, by the way. Oh. I great respect for you. Like <laughs> how you dig deep. And, uh, oh, well, thank you very much. So uh, on behalf of Sergio uh, Hall, I'm Zias Caraval from CK Research Team. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button and give us a like. And I'll see you next time on the next episode of Zcast. Zcast.